Welcome to another example for chapter five. So this is an example that will help us remember some of the key ideas about static friction that we had talked about at the beginning of chapter five. So we're being asked to find the force needed to start a 10 kilogram block moving up a 25 degree incline that has a static friction coefficient of mu s equals 0 0.8. So here's the situation that we have here. There is a block on this 25 degree incline that we are trying to pull up the ramp. So our force is pulling it directly up the ramp. And we're trying to figure out how hard we need to pull before it will eventually start moving because of the static friction. So when we draw our free body diagram, we know that we need to have an angled coordinate system, but we also know that gravity itself is straight down. So the force of gravity is mg, in this case 10 times 9.8, so that it's 98 newtons. We tend to use 10 a lot because it's just a little bit quicker to, to deal with. Okay, so the tilted coordinate system we want to draw next to our picture and next to our free body diagram to help us organize our thoughts. And with this tilted coordinate system, as always, the normal force is perpendicular to the ramp. And to break gravity into pieces, we go away from the normal force as usual. And then down the ramp along our tilted new x direction. Okay. We know that we're trying to pull up the ramp. So this is our pull force. That's what we're trying to solve for. And this is friction, which in this case is static friction. Okay, so here's our um, free body diagram. And as always, when we break gravity into pieces, this 25 degree angle from the ramp goes into that spot. And we have here that this is 98 cosine 25 degrees, and this is 98 sine 25 degrees. All right, so in every problem that we do with friction, the first thing we have to do is find the normal force. That is the complication introduced when we're dealing with friction coefficients. So we solve for the y forces. Our starting point is always Newton's second law. And then here we know that acceleration in the y direction is zero because we are not yet moving. And so the it's worth noting that this idea of needed to start moving means that the acceleration is equal to zero in both directions. If we pull a little bit more, it will start to move and accelerate, but right at that moment of the breaking point, the acceleration is zero. That's probably very important to, to recognize there from the wording itself. Okay, back to where we were in the y direction. So we have the normal force, minus the force of gravity in the y direction, and that equals zero in this case. And so the normal force is equal to 98 cosine 25 degrees, and I'll go ahead and calculate that. So that is 88.8 .8 newtons. So that is, that is true of the normal force in this situation because we're not pulling at an angle. Now, a separate thing to note, for static friction, the definition is less than or equal to mu s fn, which means that the static friction force is less than or equal to 0 0.8 times the normal force, which is 88.8 .8 here, lots of eights, <laughs> and so it's less than or equal to 71.1 newtons. Now here's the other 
interesting thing here. The force of gravity in the x direction is 41.4 newtons. The 98 sine 25 degrees. So if we were not pulling or touching this block at all, it would sit on this ramp. But when it is sitting on this ramp and we're not touching it at all, gravity is still there going downhill 41.4 newtons, but the static friction amount would be 41.4 newtons uphill so that there's no motion and no acceleration and those two forces would balance each other. So it's worth recognizing that the only reason why the static friction force is pointing downhill is because we are trying right now to pull it uphill. Because this idea of less than or equal to means that it will only do what it has to, and if we weren't touching it, the friction force would actually be pointing up the ramp to fight against gravity. So now we want to look in the x direction. So the breaking point, the needing to start moving, means that we are looking at the case where here we want the friction force to be equal to 71.1 newtons because we're pulling as hard as we can and we're going to make it work up to that absolute maximum. So the x direction, we normally would have it be equal to max, but here the acceleration is still zero because, as we said before, it is not yet moving. We would have to pull harder than the number we're about to find. So this pull force is in the direction of our attempted motion minus the friction force minus the force of gravity in the x direction, and all of that equals zero. So for this case, at the maximum, the friction force is 71.1. So I'm adding these two negative terms to the other side. So the pull force has to balance against friction and it has to balance against gravity. And so when those two are added together, we have to pull with a huge amount, 112.5. We can round that to 112 or 113, no problem. But that is the pull force that we need to have to start it moving. If we pull with 115, for example, it will start to accelerate at a small amount, but it will move up the ramp. And if we pull with 110, we won't get it to move. We will be pulling and friction won't yet be at its maximum. And we'll just be stuck there putting in a lot of effort, but not seeing any results. All right. So um, this is the last example in the friction section of chapter Five. The only example that we will see that's left has to do with spring forces. So we'll see the lecture video for um, the remaining sections of the chapter, drag force and spring force. And we will see one additional example video in that case as well. So I will see you in those next videos.